Okay, you guys. Uh, by popular request, I've been asked to do some um, some examples of how to work with our contingency tables and answer some probability questions. So we've got a bunch of probability questions and, and a couple other things we can do as well. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and try to give this thing a whirl. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to include my marginals in my contingency table. So this contingency table, just suppose that it's the number of these different types of vehicles on a particular um, lot. So like dealership lot for Ford or one for GM or one for Toyota. These are the number of the different types of vehicles that they had. So let's go ahead and put in some totals. Totals there and we'll put totals here we need the marginals. So here I'm going to do equals, type in sum, be sure to get that parenthesis, and I'm just going to highlight what I want, and then I can hit enter. And now if I drag this guy in just straight across, it will add up all of the columns together. And then I can do the same thing with the rows, say equals sum, highlight that entire row, and then I can drag this all the way down. And then for this last one, I can either sum the columns, or I could sum the rows, or I could sum just the entire inside. Um, ultimately, we just want to make sure that it is equal to the values of our raw data. So I'm just going to highlight the raw data so we can see it, and then highlight my grand total. This is not required, but it just kind of helps keep track of a few things. Okay, so let's try to go ahead and answer some of our questions. So the first one that I have is what is the probability of being a GM vehicle and an SUV? Okay, so remember and can get translated to that little kind of N, that little hump that we've got. So if I've got GM, so this is my line where all my GM values are, and this is where my SUVs are, I can notice that they intersect at this 27. So to make it even more obvious, I'm gonna change the colors. So the SUVs will change to orange, the GM line we will change to, I don't know, we'll change it to bluish. And where they intersect, we will, I don't know, we'll do purple. Purple. Okay, so GMs are here, SUVs are here, where you are both a GM and an SUV is this 27. So I'm going to say equals, I'll click on the 27, and then divide by my sample size, which is that 209, and I hit enter. Sorry, and the probability that I have that a randomly selected vehicle from this sample would be both a GM and an SUV would be about 13%. All right, let's go on to the next one. So let's let me color these back to kind of our regular. And there we go. Okay, so now I've got truck union SUV. So I want to do truck union SUV. So that also we could write that as the probability of the truck plus the probability of the SUV minus the probability of the truck intersect the SUV. Okay, well, let's get those pieces together. So we're gonna say equals the probability of the truck is gonna be the 95 divided by the 209. Great, and then we're gonna to add to it the SUV probability, 75 divided by the 209. Now we got to look for the intersection. Now here, trucks and SUVs don't intersect, meaning your vehicle can't both be a truck and an SUV of how we've, as we've categorized it. And so we'll say minus zero divided by our 209, or you know, it's just zero probability. And so now we can hit enter, and there's an 81% chance that if we were to randomly select a vehicle, that it would be a truck or it would be an SUV. So you know, this is kind of going the way of how Ford and GM are going. They're kind of going away from the sedan sales. Okay, so now let's go here. We actually already answered this one. The probability of truck intersect SUV, we already set that up that that is equal to zero divided by our 209, or you can just put zero too because the answer is zero. You cannot, in this sample, a randomly selected option cannot be both a truck and an SUV. Okay, so let's do Toyota intersect sedan. So this one, we could just say that, okay, here's our Toyota line, here's the sedan line, they intersect at the number 20, so we're gonna do 20 divided by our 209, and we're at like, uh, you know, almost 10%. All right, so let's go to our next one. So we're gonna do a given statement. So remember, a given statement can also be rewritten. Let me, let me get this in real quick. So we could also write this as 
the probability of truck intersect domestic divided by the probability of domestic. Oops, there we go. Okay, so now, what does domestic mean? Well, domestic means that we're actually going to combine two things together because domestic means things that are like made in the United States. So we've got these Ford and GM, or at least their, um, their companies are based in the United States and Toyota is based in Japan. Okay, so we just want the domestic. Okay, so Ford and GM, we're going to have to combine them together. Okay, so we want to see truck and domestic. So that is going to be those two together which is going to be equal to well let's just let's make excel do it we'll do this sum of these 40 plus 35 and we'll divide that by the 209 that is where the truck um the domestics intersect the truck line okay and we can hit enter on that that's kind of like our first little part um, but we could also just include on this dividing by this second part the probability of being domestic. So I'm going to add in some extra parentheses. You actually don't need to do it, but it's going to help me out. And I'm going to divide by the probability of being domestic. So the probability of being domestic are all these domestics divided by this total. Okay, so I can just do equals the sum of these totals and divide by this 209. And now I can hit enter. And there we go, it's almost 50%. Now, there's another way that, that I can do this that's actually a lot faster. So if I am actually only interested, I'm saying given that this vehicle is domestic. So I'm actually, I'm just gonna black these guys out for a second. Black it out, I'm not interested in Toyota at all. So here, I'm actually interested in the trucks divided by the totals over here. So let's see if that shortcut method works. I'll do sum of the trucks divided by the domestic totals. And lo and behold, we get the same value. So you can do the shortcut method where you just ignore, or you can go through the equation method and always go back to the grand total. Okay, so there we go for that one. All right, so let's do another one. So here we go. So this one is saying, okay, what is sedan? Oh goodness, I didn't fix that. Give me a second real quick because that little, that big C makes no sense right now. Let me format it and you will see what it was supposed to look like. Okay, so this is sedan complement. Okay, so or what is the problem? So given that this vehicle that we've selected is a Ford, what is the probability that is a sedan complement? Right, what does that mean? Well, sedan complement means that what's the probability that it's not a sedan? So that would leave us with our trucks and our SUVs. So I am not going to highlight these guys because and black them out because I'm not interested in them. I said given that I'm Ford. Okay, so I'm just going to look at my Ford line. Okay, so I'm going to say equals now the sum of the not sedans. So I'm going to sum up the SUVs and the trucks because that is the complement of sedans. And I'm going to divide it by the total of the Ford vehicles. And so knowing that it's a Ford, there is a almost 90% chance that the car that you have selected was not a sedan. All right, so that's kind of cool. Uh, let's go answer some of these other questions. Are tr SUVs and trucks independent? All right, so we need to go and, and ask our question, first of all, what is independent? So remember, there's a check that we can do. We can say independent if and only if the following is true, that the probability of A given the probability of B equals the probability of A. All right, so that is our definition. So first of all, we need to know what is the probability of A given B. Okay, so I'm saying given that, we'll say given trucks. So let's unhighlight this guy. We will no fill those. Okay, so given that we have a truck, so I'll blank that all out. Not interested in it right now. Sorry. Okay, what's the probability that a randomly selected vehicle is an SUV? Well, that doesn't make sense right there. Um, well, we can answer it. The probability is zero. 
So the probability of an SUV and a truck um, being give so let's just write this down. Probability of SUV SUV given truck is equal to zero because there is no intersection here. All right, so the, that probability is zero. And then what's the probability of a SUV just in general? Let's go back and unhighlight that. The probability of an SUV is equal to 75 divided by that 209. So since these two probabilities are not the same, the SUV given truck and SUV, since they are not equal, the answer to this one is no, SUV and trucks are not independent events, uh, meaning that there is an interaction between them. And this is true for almost all keyword mutually exclusive events. So these events are mutually exclusive, yes, because they do not intersect one another. Okay, now let's look at two that do intersect. Are, is Ford and SUV um, mutually exclusive? So let's go ahead and look at this one. So we need to look at the probability of Ford given SUV. All right, so this one I'm gonna do, I'll do the long way, so I'll need the probability of Ford intersect SUV, and I'm gonna divide that by the probability of the SUV. So remember, there's two ways. Over here, I did it kind of the shortcut way. Over here, I'm gonna do it the long way. All right, so equals probability of Ford intersect SUV. So the probability of Ford and SUV is going to be this 30 divided by the 209. And then I'm gonna divide that by the probability of an SUV, which is going to be 75 divided by 209. Okay, and I can hit enter and I get 0.4. Okay, so there's another way that we can look at this. We could also say, okay, remember, I'm only interested in um, SUVs, so I could black out everything else. Black out, uh, black out. What's the probability that we have a Ford given that it's an SUV? And we could just say that that is equal to 30 divided by 75, and check it out, it still equals 0.4. Okay, great, so we've got our given. Now, what is the probability of the um, Ford? Okay, and that is going to equal probability of Ford. First of all, let's, oh, give me a second. We will white these so that we can see them. Okay, so the probability of Ford is going to be equal to the sum of all the Fords, 78 divided by the 209 and say equals. Okay, so since these two are not exactly equal, uh, we can also say that are Ford and SUV independent? We can say no. And are the Ford and SUV mutually exclusive? We can also say no because they did have an intersection. Now, in the real, so for this class, if these two are not, so if the Ford given SUV and the Ford, in this case, were, are not exactly equal, we're gonna say that they are dependent events. However, in the real world, I would look at this and say, hey, these are actually pretty close to one another. They're you know, a little further than 3% apart. I actually might say that these look like they could be independent events. Um, but for this class, we're gonna stick with that if they are not exactly the same, that they are considered um, dependent events. So anyhow, that's kind of how we work with these contingency tables. Hope that it helps you out and good luck.